Hey all, so this week we got a lot of news regarding fishing and hunting games. Now let's get into it. Now, let's start with the elephant in the room. Call of the Wild, the angler, released a gameplay trailer. Now let's go through it. Welcome to Golden Ridge Reserve. A little slice of heaven, jam-packed with natural wonder and some fantastic fishing. First time out, you'll find yourself in Diamond Peak Outpost, right in the heart of the reserve. Here you can find all sorts of things of interest. You'll definitely want to pay a visit to Sophia at Taylor's Tackle Shop. And say hi to Clayton, the reserve's warden. They have lots of useful tips to help get you started. Sooner or later, you're going to want to upgrade your gear, buy some new duds, and maybe even pimp your ride. Sophia will be happy to help. She stocks a fantastic range of fishing gear from rods to reels and from bait to line. Whatever your personal idea of outdoor style is, Taylor's Tackle stocks it all. Mix and match shoes, gloves, hats, glasses, tops, and trousers to find your unique look. Now that we've got you looking your best, you're going to want to get out there and explore this majestic reserve. If you want to discover the park by foot, be our guest. Roam wherever you want. To reach those faraway places in style and comfort, you can pick up a 4x4 at any of the outposts and trailheads. To head out to deeper water, or to get around the interconnected waterways, you can grab a boat from many of the jetties. You'll find our vehicles easy enough to handle, and you can even take three friends with you, which may come in handy, since at any one time you'll likely be sharing the reserve with up to 11 others. If your fishing buddies aren't online, we can automatically match you with other avid anglers. If solitude is your idea of bliss, then our single-player offline mode is for you. The fishing experience in Golden Ridge Reserve is as authentic as it is immersive. The fish spawn according to a sophisticated ecosystem that factors in water temperature, depth, time of day, and altitude. Just like fish in the real world, each species has its own preferences when it comes to bait and lures. But gear alone won't help you break any records. You're going to have to have your wits about you if you're going to bag a whopper. You'll want to pick the right place at the right time, day or night, to put that tackle to work. If you're looking for a little more guidance on how to best approach the different fish species, there are some great guides to be found on the information boards at the Central Outpost. Smallmouth bass, for example, like the shallower waters and respond well to a spinning rig equipped with a frog-like lure. Pike are voracious hunters and use vegetation to ambush their prey. You can find them in clear lakes and small to large rivers. The biggest fish, like the mighty lake trout, well, they tend to be in the deepest waters. Casting is an art in itself. A short cast can be achieved with a simple click. Casting further afield requires a little more skill. Float fishing is all about picking the right location and getting your gear set up just right. Pick your bait, set the float depth, cast, and wait for the payoff. Successful spinning is all about how you reel that lure in. You're gonna want to experiment with different speeds and techniques, from stop and go to jigging and twitching. Don't forget to pay attention to both the depth of the water and how deep your lure is. When a fish is about to take the bait, you'll know about it. But a good strike is all about timing. Too early or too late, and you miss out. Even with a live fish on your line, the game is far from over. To bring home more than tales of the one that got away, you're gonna need skill and patience. Managing the line tension is key, and techniques like pumping will help you tire out your catch so you can reel them in. Once you've cut your teeth on the small fry and upgraded your gear, it's time to head on out into the unknown to look for that next big catch. You better watch out, though. There's some magic in these waters, and if you aren't careful, you might just be the one that gets hooked. Now, let's go fishing. First of all, please note, this is supposed to be a gameplay trailer, and when you look at just the gameplay, this is all you got. 
literally less than a third of the trailer is gameplay it is absolutely ridiculous that this passes gameplay then we go through the fact that there is no ground fishing in the game they speak about the smallmouth bass being attracted to spinning lures but when you look at the species information there's no spinning here they claim that this game is immersive and replayable it just looks absolutely boring to me i'll be honest with you looking at this gameplay trailer i was not enthused at all but i thought i'd give it a fair shake and have a look at all their content creators videos and see what i think of it then and i've got to be honest with you and this is no insult to the content creators this game looks boring as hell i cannot see myself ever buying it or ever playing it you've got one map you've got 12 fish and that's all you get for 30 dollars what are you serious no 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 I'm, I'm not going to get into this this game is overrated ridiculous and i expected more from a gaming company that's got experience in releasing outdoor games if you're looking for an alternative ultimate fishing simulator 2 came out in early access on the 22nd of august so you're into fishing imagine yourself with all the time in the world at six unique locations at dawn at midnight in the sun in the rain cast a float a feeder or spinning and sit back as you wait for the catch pick from hundreds of real licensed gear pieces travel to the far corners of the world and pick your favorite spots and then reel in the prize Fishing Simulator 2, where you do things your way. Things to note here, this is not an open world game. You do have 60 types of fish, over 200 pieces of equipment, and 6 fishing locations. Not to mention the fact that there are aquariums in the game, so what you catch you can keep. Another thing to note with Ultimate Fishing Simulator 2, it costs $8 to buy on Steam. Right now there is a 34% discount if you buy Ultimate Fishing Simulator 1 and Ultimate Fishing Simulator 2 together, meaning it works out to around $12 for the two together. Now I've done an, a video on Ultimate Fishing Simulator 1, if you want to go and have a look at that. Also let me know if you're interested in Ultimate Fishing Simulator 2, I might be able to convince them to give me a few keys for a giveaway. So drop a comment down below if you feel that we should do a giveaway of Steam keys for Ultimate Fishing Simulator 2. As I said it is early access so they will be working on the game and improving it as it goes along before the full release. Now let's get into the things from Way of the Hunter. Firstly, we know that patch 1.16 came out this last week where they fixed disappearing blood tracks, added the ability to change your key bindings, added a field of view slider, tuned the ultra wide screen support, tuned hunter sense blur to be reduced, fixed clipping of the player, tuned lake sounds and wind sounds, tuned sleep spamming so that it no longer advances animal age, tuned explorer difficulty so that it's even easier, tuned the sell prices of meat, fixed the mission riddle me this part 3, added limited photo mode boundaries in the ranger difficulty, fixed the style monoblock animation, added clipping mask for blur, tuned visual improvement for vital organs in the bullet camera, improved and optimized the save files, fixed the rare crash that was connected to the animal signs interaction, fixed the improper synchronization of animal trophies and perimeters in multiplayer, improved synchronization of the character in multiplayer, fixed the climbing ladders so it no longer corrupts animations, and fixed the weather synchronization in multiplayer. These were all for PC, but there were a few issues that obviously came through with this patch, as I'm sure you all know. They received repeated reports on bugs, animals being mislabeled as young, FPS drops in forests, and purchased items missing in storage once you got the patch. So what they did to fix this is they included a development branch of the game on Steam where if you want to try and help them sort out the issues you can play the development branch 
and therefore you're not corrupting your main save when you are playing. Now as far as I can work out they are trying to get all these things fixed before they release them on PS5 and Xbox. Reason being because it's a bit more difficult to roll back a fix on those platforms than what it is on PC. Then we also got a developer diary number 5 from them and here it is. Hello and welcome to another episode of our Way of the Hunter Dev Diary series. Today we're going to take a deep dive into the game story. It was summer 2002, and 10-year-old River was about to spend his first holiday with his grandparents. Story is an aspect where we felt like we should go further than any hunting game has gone in the past. In the studio, we are big fans of story-driven games and specifically walking simulators, and we felt like it would be a great fit next to our hunting gameplay. And kiddo, or I guess I should start calling you River now. Welcome to the Nes Perce Valley. By mixing these two genres, we wanted to catch the eye of players who enjoy story-driven games, but wouldn't necessarily think about picking up a hunting game. The story of Way of the Hunter revolves around a family hunting business, which sells uh, wild game meat to high-end restaurants. When we were researching this topic, we came upon a real-life ranch in North America, which also sells wild game meat hunted in a free-range country and is supported by the landowners. Competition is growing every day. Ethically hunted meat with government inspection? Sounds like a pretty niche market. Uh, you'd be surprised. This is where we drew a lot of inspiration and felt like we could step into the team of the ethical hunting, which we feel like is something that we would like to support strongly in our game. Our writers and designers had a lot of fun playing around with these concepts. For example, the naming scheme for the objectives is oftentimes food related, and some of the recipes that you'll encounter in the game are pretty wild, I think. Swamps north of Bear Den Ranch were always full of wild ducks. But it is not all fun and games. In its concept, Way of the Hunter story is about family, friendship, and vastly different opinions that people can have about hunting. Um, makes sense. It does? No. Can't you just call him like a normal sibling? Believe me, I tried. He ignores me, so I'm getting a bit desperate here. I wanted to make him feel guilty, get some sort of reaction. Guilty? At this time of night? Why, what's happening? I... it's hard to talk about. Can I help you? No. Yes, maybe. I'll call you tomorrow, it's late. Uh, okay. It's nice to hear your voice again. It's about what hunting is and isn't about, and it is ultimately about uh, coming to terms with respecting nature. You will see the story play out in dialogues with other characters and comic book cutscenes and in mail you receive from friends, family and clients. You will also meet other landowners in the area who all have their own backstories and add a lot of texture to the world. The main story plays out in Nespers Valley, our North American location, while Transylvania has a new set of characters who will provide their own backstory and they all have opinions on the world. If you ever want to take a detour, both locations feature a set of unique collectible landmarks and side jobs for you to find and complete. The story should keep you busy for around eight hours or so, but those of you who just want to get out into the wild, hunt freely, and create a story of your own can do just that after just a few initial missions. But we do hope you'll give the story a proper shake. For one, for those of you who are not from Slovakia, where we are based, there's this guy in the game, a landowner named Ludovic Volko, who will teach you a thing or two about the customs of Slovak hunters. I promise it'll be worth it. What a cozy cottage. I can use it while no one is here. It was always like this in Nespers Valley. But that's enough talk about the story. It's way better to experience it for yourself. So we'll hope you enjoy it. Definitely let us know what you think. And we'll see you again soon. Bye! Now what I really appreciate in this is the fact that they go into a bit of the lore around the game. Personally I'm not massive into stories when it comes to hunting games or outdoor games. However this is very intriguing and I might actually look into doing the story now that I know a bit more about the game. I really appreciate the fact that they included a bit of their story in the dev diary. My biggest highlight for the entire dev diary however was the chunky pupper right at the end. We need to see more of that pup. Now 
on to ultimate hunting. The very first thing we got was a bit of trivia. And here we got three callers and we got asked which caller attracts what. Now I'll leave this up on the screen for a moment. If you want to, you can pause. Let me know down in the comments which one you think attracts what. Let's see how good your memory is. Then we got this. The ultimate hunting gear guide for the Cruiser Deluxe. Let's read through it. Cruiser Deluxe. Type semi-automatic. Calibers. 308, 3.6, 9.3x6.2. Customization. Sight. Scope. Muzzle. Barrel. Caliber. Trivia. The Cruiser Deluxe is a great choice for those who are not fans of the bolt action rifles. This semi-auto masterpiece allows you to fire each round one by one, simply by pulling the trigger. If you don't like waiting or manually cycling the bolt and you feel safer knowing that you can take another shot instantly if you missed one, this is a better type of gun for you. And I must say, I absolutely love the way this thing looks. As I've said before, the 416 Rigby is going to be my big game rifle and I think I've just found my medium game rifle. I can not wait to take this thing for a spin. But folks, that is everything I've got. Sorry, I know this is a longer video, but we had a heck of a lot to go through. I hope you had a fantastic week. To those of you that are still here at the end, thank you so very much for watching, and I will catch you in the next video.